Good morning, Clark. Morning. With, with the way Saturday's game finished, uh, do, you know, did you have to talk with your team about uh, what happened in that final drive there by South Carolina? And, and how do you use that to maybe try to build on it uh, going into this week? Well, certainly we talked about it. I mean, I think we talked about the whole sequence. You know, it's a, it's learning. Um, it's learning for us all, you know, and I think that's the, um, there, there's an element of it that's um, the ability to execute it, right, to, to be in the right positions. And that's not just like a, a desire thing. That's a, you know, it's a, a teaching thing. That's coaching. I mean, we have to, in the, specifically to the, to the two-minute drive, um, where they had a minute 36 with no timeouts, um, you know, keeping the ball inside and front, tackling in bounds. Uh, we can't afford to allow for chunk plays. Um, you know, zone integrity is important there. So, you know, we're in, we're in drop eight zones. And the point is that you're packing those zones. You got to play uh, together. You have to be interlocked. And when uh, we have uh, vacant zones because guys are driving routes underneath them or whatever the case may be, you're, you're going to end up in situations where you open up seams for chunks to happen. Um, there's also learning from a coaching standpoint too, you know, what we call, what we do, what our strategy is there as the field constricts. Um, certainly we have to, we have to also constrict, we're still defending to the goal line. So there's still an element of, you know, you want South Carolina to feel the pressure of the clock. We just weren't able, weren't able to get the ball down in bounds. That started on the first play where we had an opportunity to. So it, it's a... <clears throat> It's a, a situation that we want to be better in, obviously, that we have to be better in. If we're going to be a one possession team in the fourth quarter playing in tight games, that's got to be where we thrive. Um, unfortunately, we weren't, we weren't um, you know, um, able to, to finish the game off. And I think there's ownership in a lot of areas there. I think when you, when you go even further back, you say, how do we finish that drive with the ball in our hands? You know, finish the game with the ball in our hands. So that's the four minute execution. And um, yeah, I thought we had a really good push early in that drive. Was really excited about the way we were running the football. And then a sequence where it had a tackle for loss. And, um, you know, third down <laughs> play where we had, we had the numbers where we wanted them. And we had Cam uh, open and we didn't sustain blocks. And, um, you know, third and seven that goes fourth and five you know, you're really looking to get inside a three for me, at least to say like, let's go for this and just finish it. Um, those are all things that we scrutinize and decisions that we make. But ultimately for me, um, the way the clock was timed at a minute 36, um, you know, the, the idea that our, our defense had had a series of stops and played really well, um, you know, to try to get them to drive for 75 yards to score a touchdown puts a lot of pressure on the offense, you know, um, a, a turnover and downs um, that, that, you know, where they're looking to get in a field goal range to tie it, you're, you're, you're tightening the amount of yards they have to accumulate. I think the other thing you have to take into consideration that we talk about, even on the fourth down attempt is, you know, how it shifts the offensive play calling mindset. You know, what we did was we forced them into a situation where they needed to score a touchdown. And so uh, they take the field needing to gain chunks, you know, so they're a little more aggressive in their play calling that that requires us to be super tight in the way we play our coverages down the field and we just you know, again we bled out yards in a situation where you can't afford to do that so it's a it's a there's a lot that goes into that um and i think a lot that we scrutinize listen uh at the end of the day let's finish it with the ball in our hands let's find a way to get that first down let's get it to fourth and go and and, and finish it that way um and then certainly you know we're going to bet on our defense every time we have to be better but um, we'll improve from, from Saturday and we'll be better. Those exposures, those experiences create a situation where you move your team forward. And though it's painful, um, to me, it's the pain that, that, uh, that delivers you to um, an evolved version of self. And so we're going to get better from that and learn from it and grow. Aria? Um, Clark, you know, what is the status of Ken Seals this week and um, you know how's that the quarterback situation looking this week well we're gonna we're gonna start Mike this weekend um, we feel like that's the right thing Kenny's still healing up and we're 
still week to week with them, but um, you know, we want to make sure that we have the best chance to get out in front in terms of planning and, and also for Mike to get settled in that role. Ken's got to heal and um, we're disappointed for Ken, although I'm, I'm so proud of him. Um, I'm so proud of the way that he competed on the sideline on Saturday, the way that he supported Mike. I think there's really a, you know, that's an indicator of the, the kind of competitor, the kind of teammate that Kenny is. Um, just one of those things that it makes you proud as a coach to see. And so uh, what I know about Ken is he's going to work his way back to health. When he is, he'll be back out there for us. Uh, until then, I know he's going to give everything to this team, and, and we'll keep evaluating him as we move forward. Bobby? Uh, so to be clear, it, so Ken will not be available for this game, and then also when he does get healthy, who's the starting quarterback? Not ready to declare Ken um, available or unavailable at this point, um, but but do know that he's got a ways to go before he's – um, you know, able to, to be, to take the starting share of reps. And so want to, want to build confidence around a plan with Mike this week and, and, um, and allow Ken the time to get healthy, not push him back, obviously before he might be ready. Um, if, if he becomes available this week, then great. If not, then we'll keep moving forward with this plan and keep checking in. Um, as far as, you know, when Kenny is healthy and he's able to throw and he's, return to his level of performance that he was pre-injury. He's, he's, um, he's our starting quarterback and we just got to give him time to do that. Um, you know, he's got to return to health and it's got to be full health and he's got to be able to do the things that make him, um, you know, a, a shining spot on this team. And uh, we'll keep evaluating that. And, and um, it can't be part of the way it's got to be all the way. And we can't rush him back. We have to be patient with it. Until then, we have a, a guy that we came out of fall camp saying he's 1B, right? Mike Wright has earned this opportunity. I thought he did a nice job on Saturday leading the offense, again, with Ken's support. And we are fully confident in his abilities to, to, um, to help us win a game on Saturday. Ripley? Yeah, Clark, regarding the last drive on offense and the last drive on defense, sometimes you look back at a game and say, well, we did the right things and we would execute it and call it that way again. It just didn't work out. Sometimes you might look back and say, well, maybe we would have called it a little differently in hindsight. Now that you've had time to think about it and to look at film and, and know what your team does well, what doesn't, what it doesn't do well, would you call it the same way again on both sides? And if not, what would you do differently? Well, I think the probably the without, you know, just the most scrutinized decision or the, the, the highest pressure decision that I faced was the the um, the third to fourth down. Um, I, I, I love the way our offense was calling it on the four minute drive. I think we were having the success. The the run through TFL is a good defensive play on a counter. Um we didn't quite sequence for momentum there. And so the third and seven, I loved the play call uh, with the, the run action um, uh, kind of read zone that had the, the, the option to throw Cam in the flat. I thought that was a, a good design where we can protect the ball, um, where we can get the ball in the hands of a playmaker. And again, I, you know, we had two guys that were blocking the perimeter there and uh, Ben on a corner and Chris Pierce on, a, on, our, on their nickel. Um, if you give me that matchup 10 times, I'm taking it 10 out of 10. Uh, we weren't able to sustain the blocks on the perimeter. And so the ball gets tackled for a two yard gain. In that moment, I, I, you know, we, we have these conversations ahead of time. You're, you're kind of fully aware of the, the opponents out of timeouts. When you, when you go for it on fourth down, you know, with a, obviously with a three point lead, you, you're, you're, it's a, you're a little safer there because the field goal ties it when it's one or two points and a field goal wins it, it's you're a little more pressed and you want to see the clock drain a little further. If that makes sense, Chris, like, so if it's a one or two point game, they can win it with a field goal. You know, we're going to, we're going to want to see that clock inside of, you know, probably 45 seconds to go for it on fourth down, knowing that, um, that they, the pressure of the time running out is going to be, uh, you know, all but insurmountable. So long as we execute, it's still that, that, that element of it, but with no timeouts and inside of 45 seconds, you're, you're feeling pretty good. Uh, with a minute 36 left, 
Um, had that been inside of three yards where I feel like we could have gotten um, a play that would allow Mike to create, to convert, um, just gives you more options. It puts more pressure. Your convert percentage is way higher. You know, we, we had talked about it being a go. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the production on the third down snap that we wanted. And so at fourth and five, again, the, the, the feeling with a minute 36 and no timeouts was that um, our defense had been playing well. Um, let's get a six point lead. Let's force them to drive 75 yards to the, to the end zone and let's put pressure on them. Um, you flipped into the defensive sequence and I fully support the idea that we're going to keep the ball inside in front. The first, I believe, two snaps, we rushed four. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the ball down on the first one inbounds. They threw a check down to a rolled up corner that, um, that you know, I felt like we had a chance to tackle it inbounds. We didn't. You know, e even, even that, even the this, this second play, which was an option route to the tight end that ran away from, from Anfernee, if we're just in the hip of that and we down it and bounce, those two plays with the clock running, you're, you're, you're starting to put some significant pressure. South Carolina has two opponents there. They have Vanderbilt and they have the clock and we have to get the clock working in our favor. We weren't able to do that. So on the back end of the, the second completion, I think the thought was that let's pack some zones here and not give them seams to, um, to run into. And so we decided then to rush three, drop eight. And we proceeded to, to have a, a good couple sequence. They threw an incomplete pass on the sideline. They threw an incomplete pass to the back. It sets up third and 10. We stayed with it. And they found a, a, um, a dig that kind of shaved uh, under late. And we, we had a voided zone. We had a player out of position, which is a, a, learning, a learning moment. But it's a brutal learning moment. But it's a learning moment. So um, we got on our heels. Um, we went to drop eight again, they completed another chunk. And at that point it becomes, um, you know, the, the, the pressure of the clocks out of it, you know, we have to make a play. And again, um, you know, that, you know, anytime you're in a two minute sequence, you know, the line to gain, the tighter that, that ball gets the line to gain, the more that you're going to tighten your coverage and, and be more aggressive. I just felt like we were never able to get ahead of the sticks and certainly, certainly, we go back and evaluate that strategically and, and get a concept of like, hey, where could we have done a better job both in the execution? And I don't wanna say that execution is a player issue, you know, because our players all are desperate to do their jobs at a high level. It's uh, how do we teach this better? How do, we, how do we train them to be in better positions? I mean, in coverage, there are only so many plays that can deliver the ball to soft spots. We have to know where the soft spots are and we have to be in really good positions to defend them. Um, so, you know, taking ownership on a coaching level of how we teach that and how we train our guys to execute in that moment. Obviously, the players having the awareness to, to execute will put us in better position. There's still going to come a point in time where we're going to want to tighten up and be more aggressive as the field compresses. And, you know, those are things for us to look at, scrutinize, and, and again, to grow as a staff, too, because I think that's as important as anything that we that we uh, continue to develop that way. But um, that's about that's about as detailed I can be in the last two possessions. And again, that's you know I think I appreciate the questions because I think that's an important part of um, you know both understanding where where we were on it, but also the growth of this program and how we're going to move forward through it. Thank you. Uh, one quick clarification: Are you saying that you might have been a little more inclined to try to run clock on offense had it been a one or two point lead instead of a, a field goal? I, I'm trying to. Just make sure I understood what you said there. So when you're talking about uh, playing with a lead in a four minute situation and and the potential for building on that lead with a field goal, you know, that the, the analytics folks hate six point margins. They just don't believe in them. And, and I understand that, you know, when you're at a one or two point lead, um, a field goal gets you to four or five, but you're always the the thing that you want obviously is to end with possession of the ball in your hands and not even leave it to chance. Um, so for us, you know, there's a world where, uh, even with a one or two point lead, we would still consider, um, and a field goal can beat you. We would still consider, uh, going for it on fourth down. Um, but for us to do that, we want to see the clock, um, not at a minute 36, right? Time has to be, 
an accelerator to the offense. And if time's an accelerator to the offense, you would still leave yourself exposed to a field goal that could win it. Um, you just want to make really sure, you know, the, the, the odds of the conversion have to be in your favor and you have to make certain that tackling the ball in bounds will get the game over. Is that uh, clear, Chris, what I'm saying? It, it, it's yeah. more, it's more like big picture um, strategy in the moment. We had a three point at fourth and five, the decision was go to a six point and defend all the way to the goal line. And um, you know, had we gotten inside of three yards, fourth and two, fourth and one, we're going to go and, and, and we're going to finish the game with the ball in our hands at fourth and five. You're just, you're battling some odds there that, that strip your play calls down. And, and, um, you know, we, we felt like our defense was playing really well. We wanted to give them a chance to put the game away. They weren't able to do it. You know, we'll, we'll, I mean, it's painful, man. I don't want to dismiss it. I mean, it's brutal, but you know, we gotta, we gotta own it now, right? That's how you move forward. No victims here. We own it. We learn from it. We get better. And, and that's everyone in the in the operation. One more quick thing. Um, do you have it thought out in your mind that if it's X amount of yards, X like do you have like kind of parameters that you you know going in so that you don't have to make that decision in the moment? We do. Yeah. Now there is a feel component to it, Chris, because you know you, you have you have we have predetermined ranges for for goes on fourth down and anytime you're coming off a tfl or a negative yardage play or a pressured quarterback right you're just gonna you're gonna reconsider based off the momentum of the sequence and and you, you know you hate to leave it to feel an instinct but ultimately uh, feel an instinct has to be a part of this but um, but we stay pretty true to what the what um, those sequences communicate to us. And most times, and now now I'm getting more big picture, like this could be a fourth down in the field. Most times we're, we're operating as an offense with an understanding of where the go line is. Uh, we're operating with that understanding on first down. And on third down, I may say, uh, get me a positive play here and we'll go on fourth, right? We come out, we get a negative play, then we have to reconsider just based off, you know, where our offense is and what the defense is doing to neutralize our advantages. Leo. Hi, Coach. I cover Mississippi State, and I'm researching a 1904 game between MSU and Vanderbilt for a story. Vanderbilt at the time was coached by Dan McGugan, the winningest coach in BU history. Have you learned a lot about Coach McGugan and the history of this program? And what does that seeing that sustained success mean to you as a former player and now the head coach here? Well, I, I'm well versed in the history of this program because this is my hometown and I followed this program growing up and I played here and I've, um, you know, we, we function in, in the McGugan Center, right? So it bears the name of Dan McGugan. We, we have a, a clear um, awareness of our success in our, in our past, you know, in our, in our further history. Um, more recently, obviously, there's, there's been, um, you know, disappointment, but some bright spots along the way. I think for us, um, just the excitement around the program right now is, is about change and uh, resource in Van United and, and the direction of our leadership um, with the new chancellor, Chancellor Deermeyer, who, who is, um, has made athletics a priority and, and um, has made this program a priority. I mean, that's someone that I hear from weekly um, and it's, it's just such a neat partnership. Um, and then obviously with, with Dr. Lee, Candace Lee, our athletics director, who's also an alum, um, and, uh, you know, it's personal to her too. This is, this is a journey for, for both of us that is not just about, you know, doing our jobs, but it's about, you know, investing in a place that carries deep, deep meaning to us. And so, um, you know, again, I guess to answer your question, the history of the program we're well aware of um, and the direction, the future of the program we're well aware of too. And it's hard sometimes to um, kind of in a world of, of um, you know, um, uh, quick fixes or short-term perspectives, you know, part of our um, charge here and part of the, the, the discipline required in executing this vision is to constantly 
be focused on where this program is headed. And again, with leadership and resources, with changes internally, uh, the, the way this team is responding and growing each week. Again, um, you go back to the first game where, you know, the first signs of adversity this season, we really um, faltered. You know, I think we're building character through uh, responses and through making competitive decisions. Um, you know, we keep um, the vision for the future in mind every single day. And it's exciting. You know, we're exciting, not just about the future of this weekend against Mississippi State, but also where this is this program's headed in a, in a bigger picture sense. And um, this has been, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously a difficult journey, but it's a, it's a great journey and one that excites me and gets me fired up every single day to come to work and do what I've always dreamed of doing. So thanks for the question. I don't know if that answers it, but I appreciate yeah. the chance to talk about it for sure. Yeah, uh, following up on that a little bit. I mean, you, you mentioned growing up in Nashville. Did you l learn a lot, hear a lot about the history of the program when you were growing up? I did. You know, I, we, we were, I mean, I mean I've got you know, uh, family history here. So I grew up going to the games, you know, so I, you know, um, I was around the program and, uh, you know, heard the stories of, of my dad played for, um, a couple of years here and, and, um, you know, he, he, he would talk about his, you know, obviously reliving his glory days, which is what I get to do with my children now. So unfortunately there's more video evidence now that I wasn't as good as I claimed to be, but, I can still talk a big game, I guess. Um, but no, yeah, certainly growing up, I, I, I was, you know, I grew up at, on campus. I was at football games. I was at basketball games. We, we supported this university, and that's what makes this opportunity for me so special. Teresa, you have another? I, I do. Uh, Clark, how important is it maybe to get back to campus uh, for, for Saturday's game against Mississippi State, and what kind of a challenge do they pose? Well, we're excited to be back home. Um, you know, I think this is a, another great opportunity for us to, to learn how to play at home, to defend our home stadium, um, and, to, and to develop a style of player at home that engages our fan base. Um, Mississippi State is a, a team, obviously, that's well-versed in its systems on both sides of the ball and systems on both sides of the ball that are unique. Um, they, they've been able to uh, manage games and, and be in close games late. And they've, they've, you know, been able to win. Uh, Coach Leach does a nice job um, on offense, obviously possessing the ball with their passing attack. Um, they can also be explosive. And then defensively, it's, it's, uh, it's helter skelter. I mean, it's a ton of movement. Um, they've got big physical uh, front that um, they move around a bunch and, that's going to create negative yardage snaps. I think challenge for us offensively is how to get a rhythm, um, how to how to get the ball into space. Um, they're going to make that challenging, and, and we have to come up with a great plan to get that done. So um, Mississippi State's a good team, and it's going to be a great challenge, and we're excited to be able to do that at home. All right, last one from Aria. Go ahead, Aria. Clark, um, you know, you said – in earlier weeks about Mike, right, that you thought he tried to kind of make too many plays himself. But after seeing him start a full game against South Carolina, how would you evaluate his performance? Do you think that he improved on the areas that you wanted to see improvement in? And what would you say, you know, you want to see more from him going forward? And just to, to be specific, I think particularly in the role that he was filling, he was pressed to try to take advantage of every snap that he had. And, you know, that's, that's not indicative of his desire to do things on his own. It's indicative of his desire to perform at a level that allows him to keep, you know, to, to stay out there. I think what we saw on Saturday was a guy that was confident. He was confident in his preparation, confident in his ability to create, and we will need him to create and make plays. You know, he was able to direct an offense that was more explosive than we've been all year. Um, and, and that's exciting. Um, and I think also he was able to, in the moment, think with clarity and make decisions to strengthen the other 10 guys on the field, knowing that, you know, it was going to be his ball the next time out. So he wasn't trying to press at all. He was just very comfortable, uh, in the role. And, and, um, I thought for his first time performed admirably, just like any first time, you know, just like from my first time as head coach on the sidelines of my second, you know, there's 
you learn a lot and he learned a lot and he uh, at times made impeccable reads and at times, you know, could have could have made a different decision with the ball that might have allowed us to, to spring a run or spring a pass. Um, we got to continue to develop chemistry between he and the receiving core, um, chemistry through timing and rhythm um, to be able to throw throw players open. You know, the explosive play to Shep was great because that ball was out of his hand before Shep was out of his break. And so now you've got the defense playing catch up, chasing the ball. Shep catches it and is able to break a tackle. And that's, that's a huge play for us, you know, touchdown off turnover. Um, so we got to, we got to, you know, drill down on those things, that chemistry, but, um, and we got to get, you know, we got to, we got to design to get all our playmakers involved, but we'll get there. And Mike certainly is, is shown himself capable. And I'm what, again, you know, young quarterback, just like Ken, you get excited about, how they develop as they get experience and you know uh, mike is uh mike has all the makings of a, a really a really strong player there for us coach that'll do it thanks all right good to see you everybody thank you thank you clark